Welcome to Artistic Adventures. We're kicking off a new project today, the Bellatrix Lestrange project. This ought to be fun. We're going to start with the dress. First of all, I have a scarf. I told you, I think, in a previous video, I get a lot of uh, scarves and things at thrift stop shops and work them into my costume. So this uh, is sort of a gauzy black scarf, and I've cut a hole in the center here. And we're going to measure from the center out to seven inches. And to make this easier than measuring all the way around the circle and cutting it out, what I'm going to do is just keep folding it over, fourths, you know, eighths, whatever, and then measure from the center down to the bottom of seven inches and cut that off. And that should make a pretty close circle. It doesn't have to be perfect because Miss Lestrange has some ragged hem on her dress. I don't know why. They have magic. They should be able to magically hem their dresses. Anyway, we're going to do the same thing with this black taffeta material, and that's going to be the underskirt. And this one, since I already have the round, it's easiest just to go ahead and cut it but I am going to make sure that I have it even by doing the same process and cutting it off at seven inches. Now, I am actually cutting this a little bit shorter than the um, gauzy black scarf one because I want that to hang over the top of it. So now I'm putting the two together with the gauzy one on top and just making sure I have it even all the way around and everything matches. And then I'm going to put glue around the edge of the waist opening. And this just glues the two pieces together and makes it a whole lot easier to work with these two pieces when we sew them to, uh, to, the, to the bodice. Um, and also we're going to have to gather it. And at the back, as usual, I'm going to put a little one and a half or so strip down the back and that will be our opening where we are able to get it over the doll's hips in the back. Now for the sleeves, I'm measuring from just below the shoulder to the wrist and I'm going to cut out a piece of material for that just big enough to go around there. Um, she has a the seam showing sewing the sleeve to the shoulder is open. You can see this the, the uh, lacings. So make sure that I don't measure it. I was trying to make sure I didn't measure it too long. I'm putting some fray stop on the edges of this so that it uh, won't have a lot of frayed edges when I start trying to sew it. So I'm not going to hem it and I need it to not fray. So now I'm going to be marking out the back part and I'm making two backs and they're going to be a little bit wider than it's needed because I'm going to fold them over to make the back opening. So I'm cutting out two of those and you can see they're they're pretty wide as they are now but we'll be folding them over and then we'll be putting some velcro on the back seam. So that's how the back will look. That looks pretty good. You know me, I don't have a pattern. I'm just making it as I go. And I'm going to put the fray check on these pieces as well. All of these pieces, uh, for some reason, all the fabrics I've worked with lately really tend to fray. <laughs> all right, now for the front part, it's going to be one piece, and she has sort of a deep V-neck in the pictures of her costume that I've seen. And for that, I'm just going to, you know, make a V and then try to match it so that the sides match up with the back. So when I sew them together, it should come together into a nice bodice. And again, I'm doing the fray check. Because she's not going to have sleeves sewn onto this, it's going to actually just be laced to it. I want these edges finished. Now for the front part, I do want to put that lacy scarf material over top of the bodice. I'm not going to put it on the, on the back two pieces, just the front. So I just use the uh, other piece as a pattern and cut that out. So now I have most of my pieces and we're going to start 
putting this together. The first thing I want to do, um, if you looked at her costume, she has these little swirl designs on it, and they're very, they're kind of subtle. Um, I'm not sure if they're silver or white. Um, I just decided I'm going to make them gold on this outfit, like little swirls of, of Bellatrix magic. And there's a little close-up so you can see it's just a swirl design, nothing elaborate, just taking the brush and making a swirl around. You'll finally see it. There you go. And uh, I noticed when I was doing this on the paper towel that the paint was going right through the the scarf material onto the paper towel, and so it wasn't staying on the on the material. So I actually have to hold it up to paint those little things on. So I'm just going to put a few on the bodice, and then we're going to do the same thing to the skirt with a little bit bigger swirls. And he just adds a little something to it. Otherwise, it's just black, black, black. So I, I started doing this on the skirt, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, that went right through. So um, <laughs> I'm going to take the black part out from underneath and do the same procedure. I'll have to hold them up since it's going to go through to the material underneath. So basically just scattering these around in an artistic way wherever you think they would look good. It does have that little uh, embroidered looking design on it too, which I thought was kind of nice. So I've done that all over the skirt and let that dry and that's how it looks. Got the little doodads on there. So now I'm going to hand sew this dress together. You don't get to see the baby sewing machine on this video, sorry. But the pieces are very small, so I think I'll just hand sew them. Right now, I'm hemming the back seam of one of the back pieces. And after I finish that, I will hem the other one. And then when we put this all together, we'll be able to put some Velcro on it. And that will um, make it so that we can actually remove this dress from the doll. All right. And doing the same thing with the other back now. I sewed that off camera. So we've got the two backs hemmed and they overlap, which will allow us to put the Velcro on. So now I'm going to sew, put the two pieces of the front together and then sew the shoulder seams of the front and back pieces together. And once I do that, I'm going to sew the side seam on this side and then I'll actually um, go off camera to sew the other side. I'm just trying to make this as short as possible. I had two and a half hours of video and I've cut it down to about 23 minutes. But still, that's I know that's a long video, but these dresses, costumes, take a lot of time. Because I want to, you know, try to explain how I'm doing it so that if you want to do that, you can too. So anyway, there I've sewed the shoulder seam and the side seam on one side and turn that out so you can see it. And then I uh, went off camera, so the other shoulder seam and side seam, and now we can open the bodice up and turn it right side out. And we're gonna actually put it on the doll. See how that fits. I'm taking her hands off because the sleeves are gonna be fairly tight and you won't be able to get them on and off without taking the hands off. So I'm putting the Velcro on now, just put some glue on each side. I've got the two pieces uh, together. And then we're going to let that dry. And once that's dry, then we can work on attaching the skirt to the bodice. All right, so, so far, so good. Looks like it fits pretty well. Now, before we start attaching this, I'm going to cut the center seam right down the middle of that glued piece to enable us to get it on and also I seem to got have gotten a lot of glue on the waistband so I'm going to trim that down a little bit so I don't have quite so much and then after I do that and I've got it pretty even then we're going to take needle and thread and just put a loose seam around right underneath where the glue is and that's going to be our gathering seam. I know you guys are missing the baby sewing machine but I just figured for this, I would just do it all by hand. Maybe we'll do that in the next project. 
That little kit, that little sewing machine is actually pretty good, I have to say. All right, so now just completing that circle and then I'm going to gather it up to the amount that I need to go around the waist and then I, I'm going to tie a knot in it. I actually left the thread attached and because I'm going to go ahead and sew the bodice to it so I don't really need to cut the thread. So I'm, I'm putting the middle part of the bodice to the middle part of front of the skirt and pinning that and then from there I go and pin the the uh, center of the back to the center of the skirt back and then put pins in between to make everything work out and then I do the same thing to the other side and now I can pick up my thread that's already still there and just start sewing a, some small stitches around the waistband uh, right below where the gathered seam is and then we'll be able to turn it and start working on the sleeves. This was kind of an interesting project because it the the costume itself is not typical of just like a regular dress. You know, she's got the raggedy hem and you know, if you look at the at the way I have the dress now, it could almost be like a ball gown because it's it's nice and even and it's a beautiful skirt, flowing skirt. But we're going to put some tatters in it to make it look more like her costume. You know, you'd think Voldemort would have bought her a hem for her dress. I don't understand that. Maybe she's just running around too much and she's, you know, so evil that it makes her skirt not hemmed. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so we've just about finished sewing this waistband on. And I don't know if you guys are Harry Potter fans. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. All right, so I've turned it and uh, now we're going to put the dress on the doll. and see how that works and it looks like it fits pretty good and just a few little trim trims I got to do there and make sure that I have it closed in the back to go all the way around her now I did tie the skirt down because it's so floppy I wanted to get it out of the way and now I've got a piece of thin leather it's kid leather um, I had a thicker piece but it just it didn't look right and what I'm doing now is putting some stitches up the front. And then if you look at some of the pictures, she has this sort of cincher. It's not really a bustier. It's just a leather strip around her waist. And it looks like it's sewed. It's leather, but it's sewed in pieces, uh, sort of raggedy looking. And so what I'm trying to do is, is stimulate, stimulate, simulate that look with uh, just making some stitches around in different patterns on the front of this. And, you know, again, you thought, you'd think with some magic, she could have got a piece of leather in her center that was complete and not patched together. But that's just part of Bellatrix's look. There was lots of uh, sewing on the outside and raggedy hems, and that's just part of how she looks. So to give this doll the same look, we're going to try to, simulate some of that pattern of the costume and once we get all the stitching done then we're going to try it on around her and I can m uh, put a little piece of velcro on this too we might as well be able to take that off as well since we can take the dress off so I'm marking uh, how big the overlap will be and then I'm placing the velcro on that leather strip with glue and then we're going to let that dry. Now she also had some in, some interesting cuffs on her sleeve and we're, sleeves and we're going to make those too but now we're going to make her wand case. She has a, a wand holster that's attached to that leather cincher that goes around her waist. And I did put a little, if you saw that, I had a little loop at the top where I was going to loop something through there. I ended up cutting that off, so never mind. It was just, it's just a rectangular piece of, of that leather. And then I'm taking my cuticle stick as my guide for this and then put glue on the edge of the leather and just wrap it around that cuticle stick. 
to help shape it. And then we'll let that dry and I'll show you how we're going to attach it to the to the leather cincher. So I'm just kind of holding that to get get to make sure it's tight before I take out the um, cuticle stick, which I want to do because there could have been a little glue in there and I don't want it to get glued to it. So to make sure this stays wrapped up until it's dried, I put a paper towel and then taped it to hold it shut. Now I'm cutting some real small strips of leather, that same black kid leather that I was using. And these are going to be the straps that hold the holster to the leather cincher belt. So these are kind of thin and just have to carefully cut. Uh, I had some scraps there that I was able to use. So, And then what we're going to do is take the bottoms and V the tips of the bottom together in a V shape. And let that dry for a minute. And then we'll be able to attach it to the, the center. So first, it's it's going to be off to on her left hip. So it's a little off center. So I just measured it to see how far down it needed to be. And then I put the glue on the back and glued that V shape to the back of the leather center. Now I'm taking the paper towel off of our wand holster and that's been dried. Now the tip, it is a little bit tapered and I just, that's where I was cutting that loop thing off I made. So the top is just a round opening. So the bottom, um, it is tapered but it wasn't tapered shut so I'm just taking some needle and thread and putting a few stitches in there to draw that in together so that it's more pointed. And now I put glue on that V on the bottom of that V-shaped shape, and then we'll be able to attach the holster to that. And yes, we are going to make her wand in another video, so stay tuned for that. All right, so there's her little belt with the the wand holster attached to it. All right, so that piece is finished, and it's got the Velcro on and everything. And now I wanted to do something to finish make the neckline look more finished. So I'm taking a leather strip, I guess leather string, it's or lacing, that's like what people use when they're uh, making leather goods and they, they lace things together. And I'm just sewing, basting that around on the top edge of the neckline. So I'm just looping the thread over it. So you can see the thread and that sort of adds to the look that her costumes have. She has this sort of half finished, half half not finished look with exposed seams and things. Even the bottom seam of uh, the sleeve is kind of open and I'm not going to be able to do that exactly that way just because her her arms are so small but um, I am leaving this going to leave the seams open or visible. So I'm uh, taking that thread all the way to the back and then I go around back to the front and do the other side in the same manner so that it comes around and meets in the back. Now to make the hem tattered looking, first of all I'm going to fold up the gauzy part and do just, I'm cutting just in sort of indiscriminately to make the hem look tattered. You can cut over folds, whatever, you want it to not look uniform. So just doing that and making sure that um, I want the black part to be a little bit shorter than the gauzy overskirt. So where I need to, I'm making that a little bit shorter. And you can see the little pieces falling out. It's just little triangles and strips cut out. And then I put the gauzy part down and do the same thing to that so that it's sort of ragged looking. And then it will look a little bit more like a witch's costume instead of a witch's ball gown. Poor, poor little Be Bellatrix Lestrange with her ragged hem. I can't get over that. You have magic. Make it hemmed. All right. So now for the sleeve, we take that rectangle and make sure we have it measured correctly. And it does come right down to the, the waist. I trimmed it a little bit so that it's a little bit more narrow at the waist than at the top. And now I'm just doing a, 
a sort of loose seam to close that uh, sleeve up and make you know make a round opening in it and that'll be on the outside so you don't have to turn it I want that to show because that's kind of how her costume looks now when I get to the um, shoulder I sort of uh, tied a knot in that to, to keep it tight and then I'm putting the needle through the underarm seam of the bodice but I'm leaving that loose because we don't want that to look attached we want it to look like lacing that's keeping the sleeve on not that it's sewed together so I'm just going around keeping the sleeve away from the bodice so that it it's not the sewing is not tight against it and just doing a loose some loose loops between the sleeve and the bodice and that will give us the look that we want So once I finish this side, I'm going to do the other side, and then I have a few more finishing touches to the sleeves. We're getting there, getting there, almost finished. When you get to the underarm, then you can tie a knot, and there you have the sleeve with the lacings showing, and that's how her costume looks. Now I'm taking some leather and I'm making it pointed on one side. And we're going to do a cuff because, you know, when you're using a wand, sometimes there's sparks that fly back and hit your wrist when you flick the wand. Well, that's, that's my story anyway. And so we're going to put this uh, leather strap around her middle finger and attach that to the cuff as well to give it sort of an interesting look. She has something similar to that in one of her costumes. I don't know if it's exactly like this, but... Um, it's close. So I'm clamping that down, the glued down on there. Did that for both sides, and now we're going to put this together. We're putting the um, belt on with the wand holster, which I think is adorable. I can't wait to get the wand in there. And now we're going to take these leather cuffs and place the string over her middle finger and then glue them together underneath. We'll do that on both sides, and then we have our Bellatrix. There she is, with her raggedy hem and everything. She might like, this dress might look a little bit better than the dress she actually had, but oh well. So there it is, front, back, close up of the handy dandy wand holster, and another view of the front for you. Hope you liked this video. We got more coming up on Bellatrix. Next, we're going to be doing her face up. Stay tuned. Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.